You feel in control, but you're not. From the moment you're born, you're told you're the one deciding. You choose what to eat, what to wear, who to become. But science doesn't care about feelings. And science says that sense of control is an illusion. In 1983, neuroscientist Benjamin Libet conducted a simple test. Volunteers were asked to flex their wrist whenever they felt the urge. They watched a clock and marked the exact time they became aware of the decision. Meanwhile, electrodes watched their brain. And what they found shattered everything. The brain made the decision before the person was even aware of it. Half a second before the subject reported feeling the intention, their motor cortex had already started preparing to act. That means your body knew what you were going to do before you did. Before the you in your mind had a chance to think. So the question is, if your brain already decided, what exactly is you? People hate this. Because it crushes the foundation of morality, accountability, even identity. If I didn't really choose, how can I be guilty? If I'm not choosing, how do I grow? If I'm not choosing, then what is the point of trying? Libet himself wasn't so quick to kill free will. He noticed something interesting. Even though the brain prepares the action before the decision is felt, there's still a very brief moment where the subject can cancel the action. He called it free won't. You don't choose to act, but you might have the final word in stopping it. So maybe you're not the author, but you're still the editor. Still, let's be honest, what kind of freedom is that? You don't write the script. You just cut a few lines. It gets worse. In 2008, John Dylan Haynes ran a similar study using fMRI. This time, the computer predicted subjects' decisions seven seconds before they consciously made them. Seven seconds. Try sitting still for seven seconds. And realize that during that whole time, your brain already knew what you were about to do. And you still thought it was your idea. Your sense of choice is not a driver. It's a passenger. Maybe even just a witness. Let that sink in. Everything you regret. Everything you're proud of. Every decision you thought you made because you were different. It might have been decided before you had the chance to resist it. This isn't just neuroscience. It goes deep into philosophy, into how you see yourself. If you're not the source of your thoughts, then what are you? Are you a soul floating somewhere behind the brain? Or just a story written by experiences you didn't choose? This is where the existential dread begins. Because when you remove the illusion of control, you're left with something darker, more honest. A person is not a decision maker. A person is a pattern. You are your habits, your reactions, your biases. And most of them were installed before you knew how to say no. By your parents. By your school. By your fears. You say, I decided. But what really happened was, your environment pushed, your emotions pulled. And then your mind took credit for whatever happened next. The mind is a narrator, not a commander. But this realization doesn't have to destroy you. In fact, it can be the beginning of something deeper. Because when you stop believing the lie, you start seeing the truth. You see what actually moves you. You become aware of the mechanics underneath your decisions. And that awareness? That's the only real power you have. Not free will, but clear sight. Not full control but honest perception. And when you begin to observe your patterns without judgment, without pretending you're the one in charge, you create the space for transformation. Because maybe the self isn't something you command. Maybe the self is something you witness and slowly shape, not by force, but by understanding. So if you're not choosing your thoughts, if your choices come from patterns, then what does growth even mean? Most people think changing your life is about deciding to be different. But now you know, a decision is the end of a process, not the start. It's the visible tip of an invisible chain. Past trauma, social conditioning, neural pathways, chemical balances. You don't change by choosing. You change by reconditioning. By breaking the automatic. By staring hard at what's been automatic your whole life. The way you flinch when someone criticizes you. That wasn't a choice, that's survival. The way you sabotage when things get good. That's not laziness. That's a script written by fear. You inherited your reactions. Now the question is, do you want to keep them? If your brain is a system of prediction machines, then every reaction you give it strengthens that prediction. 
react with anger enough times. It builds a shortcut. This is who we are. You become a reflex. This is why the world feels like a loop sometimes. Why do the same kinds of people show up? Why do your relationships follow the same arc? Why do you hit the same emotional walls? Not because you're cursed, but because you've trained your mind to expect and create certain outcomes. Breaking the loop doesn't start with willpower. It starts with observation. Watch your reaction without reacting to it. See the fear. See the shame. Don't fix it. Don't escape it. Just witness it. That's the first crack in the wall. Because here's the deeper truth. What you call yourself is just the story your mind tells to explain your behavior. But what if you stopped believing that story? What if you said, this pain I carry, this persona I protect, this rage I replay? Maybe none of it is truly me. Maybe it's just what got installed. And maybe, maybe I can uninstall it. But here's the problem. The system fights back. It hates change. Your mind will whisper. That's just how you are. It'll show you flashbacks, justifications, memories that scream. Don't let go of this pain. It's who you are. Because identity feeds on repetition. And repetition is comfort. And comfort is control. Even if it's toxic, even if it's destroying you, your mind would rather repeat hell than risk the unknown. That's why most people stay stuck. They confuse familiarity with truth. But the moment you realize this, you step outside the loop. Not fully, not forever, but for a breath. And in that breath, there's a choice, not of action, but of perception. You can say, I see the pattern, I see the fear, I see the script. And that sight alone begins the unraveling. You don't fight the system with force. You collapse it by watching it. This is what real change looks like. Not loud, not heroic, just painfully honest. It's the moment you admit You've been living the same year again and again, with a different calendar. And you say, no more. Not because you hate yourself, but because you've finally seen yourself clearly. That's where growth begins. Not in forcing new thoughts, but in no longer feeding the old ones. Because the moment you stop believing the illusion, you stop obeying it. And the person who sees clearly, even for a moment, is already free in a way most people will never be. So now you know your thoughts aren't you, your habits aren't you, your emotions not you either. They are echoes of things you didn't choose, experiences you didn't ask for, memories carved into your nervous system when you were too young to understand, but too alert to forget. And yet, you carry them like they're yours. You defend them. You repeat them. You live inside them, not because they serve you, but because they're familiar it's easier to feel stuck than to feel lost. Easier to repeat pain than to face silence. Because silence is where the lie dies. That lie that you are who you've always been. The people don't change. Trauma defines you. That anger protects you. That numbness makes you safe. No, it doesn't. It just makes you predictable. To others. To the system. To your past. You don't need to become someone new. You need to stop being the version of you that was built to survive things. You're no longer going through. Because that version, it's outdated. It was built for war. And you're still carrying it in peace. Your hypervigilance, it served a purpose. But now it ruins your sleep. Your people-pleasing, it kept you safe. But now it destroys your boundaries. Your cold detachment, it helped you escape. But now it kills your connection. Your defenses became your prison. And here's the thing about prisons. They don't need guards. They need belief. As long as you believe you need them, you'll stay inside. So stop asking, what should I do? Start asking, what am I scared to let go of? Because under every pattern is a payoff. Even the ones that hurt. Your pain protects you from responsibility. Your rage protects you from vulnerability. Your sadness protects you from failure. Your numbness protects you from the truth. You're not addicted to suffering. You're addicted to protection. And when you finally realize that you don't need protection anymore, you begin to shed it. But don't expect applause. When you start breaking patterns, you threaten every person who's still living inside theirs. 
people won't like your clarity. They'll call it arrogance. They'll mock your change. They'll try to pull you back into the script. Because your growth exposes their stagnation. But don't stop. Let them stay where they are. You didn't come this far to explain yourself to people who haven't even met themselves yet. This path isn't loud. It isn't public. It's quiet, lonely, ruthless. But it's real. And real is rare. So rare, most people live their whole lives without ever touching it. Because real requires you to kill who you thought you were just to meet who you might become. It demands the death of the narrative. The sacrifice of identity. The complete collapse of comfort. And still it's worth it. Because what you get in return isn't happiness. It isn't confidence. It isn't peace. It's truth. And truth doesn't need to feel good. It just needs to be seen. Because when you finally see clearly, even if you're broken, even if you're lost, you're more alive than the billions of people sleepwalking through their identities. And in that awareness, not control, not certainty, but in raw awareness, you begin again. So now we, we reach the end, not of a script, but of the illusion that you were ever the author. You were never writing the story. You were just waking up to the fact that it was already being written by biology, by trauma, by memory, by repetition. And for the first time, you're holding the pen, not because you took control, but because you stopped lying. You stopped pretending to be free, just to feel safe. You stopped pretending to be broken, just to stay comfortable. You stopped pretending you had no choice, just to avoid the pain of real decisions. Here's the truth nobody says. You won't be saved, not by healing, not by success, not by love. The deeper work is this, learning to stand in the storm of your own mind, without flinching, without running, without needing someone else to fix it. Because when you finally stop escaping, you discover something most people never find. You're not fragile. You're just layered. There is a part of you that is still, always watching, always waiting. Not the voice. The awareness beneath the voice. That's who you are. Not the thoughts. Not the feelings. Not even the trauma. The awareness. And that awareness doesn't need fixing. It just needs remembering. When you touch that space, even for a second, everything changes. Not because the world is different, but because you stop needing it to be. You stop needing closure. You stop needing apologies. You stop needing people to understand. You stop chasing peace in things that cannot give it. And you start building it, brick by brutal brick, inside yourself. You're not here to be happy. You're here to be awake, to feel everything, to break and rebuild to lose and learn, to die and be reborn a thousand times without ever leaving this body. And every time you think you're done, you'll go deeper. Not because life is cruel, but because your soul didn't come here to play safe. It came to burn away everything that isn't real. Every identity, every illusion, every lie. Until what's left is so raw, so real, that it can't be named. It can only be lived. So here's the final truth. You may not be in control, but you are not powerless. Your job was never to steer the river. It was to learn how to swim, to stop cursing the current, and start trusting that wherever it takes you, you'll meet yourself there. Because at the bottom of every breakdown, under the rubble of every identity collapse, there's one thing waiting. You. Not the version people wanted. Not the mask you built. Not the story you clung to. Just you. And that... That's enough. That's always been enough.